Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7c practice problem on the topic of the electrostatic model. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps promote our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be solving today. So we have a diagram and we have three positive charges, each with a magnitude of 2 coulombs. They are arranged in an equilateral triangle, 0.2 meters on the side, and we have to indicate on each uh, charge the direction of the net force and also calculate the magnitude of the force on each charge. So this is, you know, what we have over here. We have our triangle, it's equilateral, which means that all of these angles are 60 degrees. Um, all of them are positive. And just for the sake of keeping this as simple as possible for you guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name them. So this is gonna be charge one. This one I'm just gonna name two. And then this one we're just gonna name charge number three, just so that we always know what we are talking about. So these three are positive and we have to draw here the direction of the net force. Now this goes a little bit back into physics 7b, right? Because these are forces and we did forces on 7b. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by looking at the picture and looking at the direction of the forces. Let's just concentrate on one for a second. Now one is feeling a force due to two and then another force due to three. These two are positives, which means that they would want to repel each other. So one feels a force due to two in this direction. And this would be F of two on one because two puts it on one. And then if we remember our uh, Newton's laws, then we know that for a reaction, there's a reaction or like the equal and opposite rule. And this would be that one puts on two like this. And this should be equal in magnitude, but opposite in directions, as we can see. And now we're going to do the same for one and three. So three puts a force on one. But then one also puts a force on three. And this one I'm going to call 1 and 3. These two are equals and opposites. And then we're going to do the same for 2 and 3. So this one goes in this direction because it's repelling in this direction. And this is 2 on 3. Again, equals and opposites. This is 3 on 2. And this is a Newton spare. This is a Newton spare. This is a Newton spare. But now this isn't my final answer because what the problem is asking us is uh, the direction of the net force. And this, all of these are forces, but none of them are the net force. So from 7b, we need to remember how we calculated the net force. And the net force on a, on a charged particle is just the addition of all of the part of all of the forces affecting that uh, charged particle. So if we do our vector addition, we're gonna get that the net force on one is just the addition of these two. You can do your vector um, addition and we would get the X components in this case would cancel out. So we would only have Y components. So whatever double this amount is, then that's gonna be, and this will be the net force on particle one. And we're gonna do exactly the same over here. Now these two don't necessarily cancel out on X or on Y per se, uh, because they aren't like exactly canceling on X. However, the proposition that you only have to do vector addition is exactly the same, like you would put this arrow over here and then just add them up and then if you do your vector addition, even if you just do it visually, you're going to get something on this uh, direction. So this is net 2 because this is 2. 
and then the same thing over here if you do, if you do your vector addition you have to put this arrow over here and then you have to add them up and you know it's something long going on this direction and this is your net force number three now all of these forces in theory should make if this is a perfect yeah you can kind of see it this is a perfect equilateral triangle now obviously you don't have to do this on a quiz i wouldn't waste the time but um, all of these forces should point to the center, right? Because it's an equilateral triangle. So that's how I sort of like can confirm to myself that this is um, well done. So this is the final answer for part A. It's, you don't have to like actually calculate anything. You just have to like put a little drawing there. Final answer would be the black arrows because that's where we want the black ones. Uh, but it is good to know where they are coming from and they're coming from this addition and this is going to be useful Because for part B we actually do have to calculate um, You know some numbers like what's the actual number for this arrow for example So let's just go ahead and do that so the first thing that I'm gonna point out here is that these net forces even though in terms of vectors they are different, what we want is the magnitude of each uh, net force. And furthermore, the magnitude of these three vectors is exactly the same. So I'm just gonna write it out. like this but i just want to make sure that you guys know that this is only in terms of the magnitude because obviously a vector is magnitude and direction and the direction is very different so the magnitudes are exactly the same why are the magnitudes exactly the same well i think that this is something that almost everyone can sort of like visually see but if we do it like mathematically which we're here to learn this is just a learning video so i'm just going to explain you why they need to be the same just real quick so f net one is the addition of these two right so this one is the addition of these two And then this one is the addition of these two. Like this. And then what do we have here? We have a bunch of equals but opposites. So these two are equals but opposites over here. And then these two are equals but opposites over here. And then these two are equal but opposites over here. So basically, well, at least in terms of, uh, well, we can just look at it in terms of magnitude. Well, no, actually we can't because it's our vector. So we, we can't do that. We just have to go with vectors like this. Yeah, doing it in terms of magnitudes actually doesn't really work because um, of how vectors are added. But basically because these three are a combination of a bunch of uh, Newton's Peirce laws. And, uh, and these three are also a result of all of the charges being exactly the same charge. This wouldn't work out if like one of them were like three Coulombs and then the other ones were different. But because these are all pairs of Newton's Peirce laws that come from the exact same charge, and then this is an equilateral triangle, all of these guys, like this addition, is exactly the same as this addition, exactly the same as this addition. So because the components uh, that add up to the to the magnitudes are exactly the same, then if we calculate, for example, this guy over here, the first one, then that would be a final answer for two and three as well. So all you would basically have to do on a quiz is just say, you know, these three are the same and it will be fine. But this is a little bit of an explanation of why they have to be the same in this case, where the angles are the same, the charges are the same, the components are the same, and so on and so on. So let's just go ahead and calculate. Um, you know, let's just pick this one. It seems like the easiest one because it's just going to go straight up. So F net 1. Is equal to. 
2 on 1 plus 3 on 1. And then we have to use our um, equations that are given to us. So 2 on 1, this would be charge 1 times the electric field produced by 2. And this would be charge 1 times the electric field produced by 3. So whenever you're using this, um, this is whomever is filling it and this is whomever is producing it. So if I want the force of 2 on 1, then that would be charge 1 times the electric field due to 2 and so on. So it's always who's filling it and who's producing and due to whom. So this is who fills it and then this is due to what. And now we just have to like substitute this um, equation over here which I'm just gonna go ahead and because these are vectors, I need to be very mindful that my answer should have components. So let's see, the magnitude of the electric field on two would be KQ2 R2. So this would be 9 times 10 to the 9, 2 coulombs, 0 0.2 squared. So the magnitude of the electric field is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9 times 2 divided by 0 0.2 squared. So 4.5 times 11. And then the units of this are going to be, okay, so Newton's meters 2, C2, that's Q. And then this is C2. And then you want to divide by um, meters. Oh, no, this is just C. Okay, yeah, so this is just one C because this is, uh, Q2, not Q squared. So this is going to be Newtons over Coulombs. So it's a magnitude, but we need a direction. And the direction, so which one am I doing? I'm doing two on one, so I'm doing this one. So the direction so this is the well, okay, so this is the force and then the electric field is in the same direction just by definition. So we need an X component and we need a Y component. And this is 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees because this is 60 degrees over here. Same as this one, same as this one. And then if you just work out your equivalent angles, then you're gonna see that this has to be 60 degrees as well. So we're just gonna separate this into X and Y components. So the X component is going to be this times cosine of 60 times cosine of 60, 2.25 times 10 to the 11. The Y component is going to be the same number, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat, but now I want to multiply times sine of 60. So 3.89 times 10 to the 11. Okay, so this. Now, I also need the one for three. And the one for three is gonna have the exact same magnitude because uh, this is two coulombs, this is still 0 0.2, and K is always gonna be this number over here. So magnitude is gonna be the same, but in terms of direction, it's gonna be equal on Y, but opposite on X, right? Because this one is, goes over here. So it's just gonna be negative 2.25 times 10 to the 11, and then positive, because again, this one goes up, 3.89 times 10 to the 11, like this. And if I add them up, I'm gonna get 0, and this number, so times 2, 
7.790 oh, times times 10 to the 11th Newton's Coulombs over here. And now going back to my to this equation. F net one is equal to Q1 times E2 plus E3. So this is equal to Q1 times zero on X times 10 to the 11. So by, and Q1 is equal to two. So F net one vector form would be uh, times two again. 1.55, well, 1.56 if I round it up, but I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a right answer. 1.56, um, well, this is vector form, right? So 0, 1.56 times 10 to the 12 Newtons. And then the magnitude, it's pretty easy because I only have a Y component. So because I only have Y component, the magnitude is just the same number. Um, so it's just 1.56 times 10 to the 12 Newtons. And again, from what I said, this would also be the magnitude of the second one would also be the magnitude of the third one, just because of the symmetry of the problem. So final answer, here it goes. Now, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, this problem, I mean, if I could have just used the definition one and then just assume a bunch of symmetries and I would be done, you know, in way less steps, but I think that there are some things that are really important here, because even though this seems like an easy problem, if you have a lot of practice on this and you know your vectors, a lot of students actually would struggle with this sort of problem. Why? Um, not remembering the fact that for a force is a vector, not a scalar. Vectors have magnitudes and directions. And a lot of students, um, you know, what, what they would do would be take this part over here, grab this number, which is just the magnitude. So grab this number, multiply it by two, and then their final answer would be, uh, so this would be nine, but then multiply by two, their final answer would be like 18. The final answer would be 18, just because instead of adding up components, they would be adding up these two by magnitude. And this is something that students learn from Physics 7b. When you have a vector, you never add them um, by magnitude. This is something that on every single 7B video vectors, I always say, but students, you know, are still going to struggle and they're just going to see this and they're just going to multiply numbers and that's it. But you need to remember that, you know, just as uh, when you have to be super duper careful on 7B, uh, now you need to be super duper careful on 7C because that's just the thing with vectors. This is how we add them up. And if I had just add up this two times, then the answer, it wouldn't be the same, first of all, and it would be wrong because that's just not how you add them up, right? So anyways, uh, so this is the end of this problem. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will see you guys on the next video.